Welcome everybody to another episode of Renegade's Garage. So to bring you a new episode for a new year, we're back with my runaway. With a part two of how I wired it, slash, it's changed a few times, but this is currently the final option I've gone with. It's completely different for the most part from part one. So that's why I'm gonna give you guys an update. Stay tuned. All right. As you guys can see, my camper is a bit different from the first time you guys have seen it. It's now gained a propane tank in the back, new rims and tires, new fenders, and up on the top, it has a basket with solar. I'll explain that setup later and more in depth video of that by itself. But so, with no further to do, let's take a look at the wiring of my new camera. Okay, now to start from the beginning, you guys remember from the old video, I had a small, um, like battery backup style battery on the inside that has now been changed to, I have a 500 amp hour shell power station. Now I have hooked up my extension cord running over to the main plug in. So I'm going to run the, my TV and a couple other things inside off of this. Frame me completely off grid. This plug right here goes round and down to a plug I have right there. That's the main plug for the internal power of the camper which that plug is the old part of the old wiring to the camper. I didn't really feel like re-engineering it. So that's what we get for right now. And then from the solar panel, like I said, on the roof, it comes down to the main plug here is a Jackery plug that goes into adapter. And that runs into a, the Anderson style plug that the shells use. So it can use either this five millimeter DC in or the Anderson. I prefer to use Anderson because I can get more voltage in. Also with the new wiring in the camper, I include this red, this red rock light for my front storage box. So now I have light in here at night. So I'm not trying to use my cell phone. I just hit a button inside, turn the light on and I can see just fine. And how it's positioned by the box open, it actually just still keeps the inside of this lit up pretty good without really putting out a whole lot of excess light to ignore neighbors or anything. Now, as for outside lighting, you guys have seen this rock light, it stayed the same. I end up getting, having a USB light that I use for my table area. As you've seen in the other video, I have my underneath rock light installed right there. And then I don't think I've shown this, but I could be wrong. I swapped out the rear tail lights to a set that have backup light backup lights. So I actually have backup lights. Then that's wired into the seven way for the Jeep. Which I don't know if I've mentioned this. I think I have. I have a seven way plug on this, so I'm going to charge my battery off the Jeep. I run the rear lights off the Jeep. So, there's the outside. Let's take a look at the inside. Okay. Now, for the inside the, the camper, for my main lighting, is still the same. It's the rock light right there with my aux beam relay panel as my main controller but on top of the rock light right there if I hit this button right here I installed these lights which I think they're called fairy lights or something so now I have a nice soft red light in here at night to be able to see by without having this nice big blinding one on 
and also new to the camper now I think I had the panel right there but now I installed a makeshift sound system so now I have this 12 volt amplifier that is connected to two surround speakers in both corners which is connected to a aux cable into my TV so you might listen to the TV and surround sound but also it allows the TV to be turned up enough to hear it from outside a lot more clearly also I can plug my phone into it into that system for you might listen to music and stuff okay now we're actually inside the camper you can see the aux beam switch panel still right here it's plugged into my fuse panel then the main you know positive and negative come into the fuse panel from outside like usual then I have a cigarette plug right here Oops. That's connected to switch number six, and that controls the fairy lights. Or if it's winter, and I need to run a blanket or whatever, a you know heated blanket. That's 12 volt, and just unplug, you know, the USB out of it, turn the switch on, and run whatever I want off of it. Now, as for what's plugged in to the 120 volt side I have the adapter for this because currently I want that I only run this usually when the TV's on so the inverter is already on might as well just run that off of it to keep some power draw from a 12 volt side you know brought down a little I have a fire stick on my TV, so I have the adapter and the USB there, but I'm debating of just running that off of the USB port there, then the TV and the AC unit. Then down in my cubby right here, I have a USB fan I can set right here if I need, but I have since bought I'm a Ryobi, I use Ryobi tools. I have a Ryobi fan with a nine with a four amp hour battery and a Amazon special nine amp hour with a cigarette lighter based charger for the Ryobi tools. So with this current setup, if I'm running the TV at night, trying to charge my phone, you know, I have the lights on or whatever. I have averaged around 12 hours of charge off of this current setup, and that's running the TV all night. I have a um, Wi-Fi router I bring with me, or hotspot, to about run the TV off of. So the 500 amp hour battery gets me roughly 12 amp hours. It's not technically dead at the end of that 12 hours that's just like from start i start watching tv a lot at night and start using lights a lot to the following morning usually by the following morning is around 25 ish percent battery life left and as you've seen i have the solar on top which i'm going to go up show you here in a second but with the solar it's usually recharged at least enough to last me the next night and I usually go camping for two to three nights so I usually can kind of get away with it but but when I first switched over to using this battery ba battery packs I bought the Jackery 250s or 240s whatever these are 240 I just read it right there and this would last me about six ish hours of that same use so this i was only i would limit myself to watching tv for maybe two hours get a good movie in and then i just strictly run 
just the 12 volt side to power my lights and charge my phone for the rest of the night. But this is a very good option. I recommend if you're going to go with this option, go with the 500. But these are very useful. useful. And because I already have it, I bring it with me. Just, you know, stick it right here. If I have a spare, keep, try to keep it fully charged. For if I go camping and need um, some extra juice to get me through another day for at night, I have my options right here. Hey, can I help you? Hey, I'll go show you guys the solar panel next. Okay, now we're up on the top. You can see my creation. I made this basket, this like frame that goes on the top of my basket that's welded on. I have hinges on all four corners, which allows if I just pull the pins on both, pull the pins on one side, I can well tilt the whole thing up where I can either have the sun come out from that way or sun coming on it from this way, which allows for it to get a good amount of sun on it. This panel right here is a cheap one off of Amazon. There's a hundred watt hours. Please note with the shells with solar input it does not like going up to a hundred watt hours. It will do it. It don't like it. But I don't, it's very rare I get a full, full sun on this panel. So normally that's not a problem. I just like having the bigger panel because it allows for the more sun I have on it, even if it's little sun, it'll still give me a better charge percentage or wattage than if not. But it's just, I have it hooked up right here to the wire right in the middle so when it pivots it can pivot both ways and then it goes around down into the toolbox to charge so there you have it there's an updated wiring video of how i wired my runaway this works fine for my purposes maybe your purposes are different i'm gonna be at the runaway rally here in ocala next weekend so i want to hopefully check out some other rigs and get some ideas maybe i can do something better to my rig off of these ideas. Maybe some people might like my idea and go with something similar. That's, a, that's the thing I love about the tiny camper communities that we're so open to learn from everybody. But that's how I did mine. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions or have any ideas, shoot me. Put them down in the comments. Make sure to like the video and share it with your friends. And I'll catch you on the next video. And... A updated video is coming soon on the Jeep because as you can see it's quite a bit different but to keep up with the in-between updates of what's going on with everything follow me on Instagram renegade JK and you will see what's been going on in the behind the scenes catch you guys later